Grogu and I can feel each other's thoughts. Grogu? My name is Jeff. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this very simple Polaroid pop-up effect in Photoshop. Now, the only thing you really have to know up front is that the picture that you select has to meet three criteria. It has to have a subject that kind of pops up like this. That subject has to be touching the ground or a surface. And then three, that surface or ground has to kind of move into the foreground like this. So once you have your picture, then all you're gonna do is click on your image layer and go Control J and J to make two copies. And then we're just gonna hide the top one for now. Not that it really matters, but we're gonna hide it. And then we're gonna go to the background and go to our gradient tool over here. If you don't see it, it might be your paint bucket or one of these, so go to gradient tool and then go and click up on the color kind of gradient slider thing up here, which is gonna bring up the gradient editor. Now in there, don't worry about picking any presets or anything. Just go to whatever you have here. You should have two like this. If you don't, then maybe go into basics and just click this one. I'll just do it for now. So click that one. So you just have two boxes. Click on the left box, then click down here under color, and then pick a color from your background. Maybe we'll pick a little bit of a darker color on this side of the gradient that you want in the background. So I'm gonna pick the green from his face and then click OK. Then I'm gonna to go to the other side, click on that box, click down here on the color, and then click the same spot. But then this time I'm just gonna drag it up. So it's kind of a brighter version of the same color. And then click OK and OK. Now we're gonna hide layer one. Then with your gradient tool selected still, you're gonna click near the bottom and drag about two thirds, like halfway or two thirds of the way up and let go and that's gonna make a gradient. Now, if yours isn't dark enough at the bottom, then just go back into your color here, click on the box, click on the box, and just drag it down a little bit. So I'm gonna make mine a little bit darker, click OK and OK, and I'm gonna try again to about two thirds of the way there. That's a little bit better, just so I have a little bit more of a transition from dark to light. If I went too far, you can see that it'll the gradient is like too consistent. I want it to kind of end down here, which will be kind of where our foreground ends as well. Okay, next we're gonna bring back layer one, click on it, go over to your marquee tool, rectangular marquee over here, and make a box that's close to what you think the Polaroid size might be. So I'm gonna go about like that. Then you're gonna right click and select transform selection. Then you're gonna right click again in the box and click perspective. Then you're just gonna drag the top ones in. And if you have like, let's say this was on a road, you know, and you can see perspective in your image, try and follow it. It makes it look a little bit better. So I'm just gonna, you know, drag mine out, maybe drag, whoops, don't drag them down, just drag them, you know, across a little bit. So I'm gonna go about like that, I think. Then I'm gonna right click in there again, and this time go to scale and maybe scale this up. Oh, you see how if I'm doing this, it's changing together. So you just want to make sure that up here, this chain thing is unchecked when you're dealing with scale. So I'm going to bring this back a bit, maybe bring that up a bit, and maybe even bring a little bit to the side. I want it to be a little bit wider than what it was. Okay, so something like that looks pretty good. Then just click check and head down here to this little box with the circle in it. That's a mask and click on that to make a layer mask. And you can see that the, whatever is white is whatever we have left. And whatever is black looks like it's erased, but it's actually just covered up by the mask. All right, next we're gonna click the eyeball to bring the top layer back, or the layer one copy that I have right here. You're gonna go over to the fourth tool down, the quick selection tool. If you don't see it, it might be the magic wand or something over here. So quick selection tool, then go up here to select subject. Now. Photoshop usually does a really good job. Like right now, this did a really good job of selecting. But if it has, let's say, uh, I'm gonna just make my brush a little bit bigger here. If it has a section where it's kind of sticking out like this and it didn't get a part, then just go to the minus and bring it back to where you want it. And the same note, if there's something jutting in, then just go to plus and add it back until you get the selection to be pretty close to what you want then click up here on select and mask. And this gives you a better view of kind of what you have selected and what you haven't. So it's kind of rough down at the bottom. I could fix that up, but I know that anything in this range where my box is 
doesn't really matter because it's going to have the original image behind it anyway. So I'm not concerned about anything here. You're just concerned about stuff up here, the part that's going to be popping out of the image. All I'm going to do is smooth it out a bit. So I'm going to just click kind of over here a bit, feather it just a touch, and then shift my edge back a bit. And then go down here to Output 2 and change Selection to Layer Mask and click OK. At this point, if you still have to fix up something on your selection, then just go to your Layer Mask and use a black brush to erase things and then a white brush to bring them back if you need. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is put the Polaroid outline around the image part of our project. So to do that, go over to your second layer, whatever one's in the middle, and double click to the right over here, which will bring up your layer style menu. And then just go down to stroke. Make sure you click on the word stroke, not on this box right here. And you can adjust your size to whatever makes sense. So I'm going to make mine about 70. Yours might be different depending on the size of your image. But the only thing you really need to make sure is that position is set to inside. If you go to outside, you're going to get like curved edges and stuff like this, which doesn't look good. So go to inside and then make sure your color is white. So white and click OK and OK. Now to bend the image to make it look a little more real, we are going to go here. There's this little chain between the thumbnail part and the mask. Click the chain so it disappears. That's going to separate them, unlink them. And then make sure you select it on the mask right here. And you're going to go up to Edit and then down to Transform and Warp. Now in there, if this grid one comes up, we don't want the grid one. So right up here, it's a grid 3x3. Three three. Change it to Default so you just have the outer kind of rim of the Warp tool. And then all we're going to do is go to this bottom corner and slide this one up a bit like this. This top one, you're also going to slide it up, maybe out a little bit. You can kind of play around with what looks good. If you want to curve it a little bit, then just go to these handles and you can you can warp it even more, like kind of curve it. So I'm going to kind of curve that one. I might even curve that in just a little bit more. And then on this side, do the same thing. I'm going to go a little bit less right here and then just maybe curve it down a bit. And then up top, I'm going to stretch this side out a little bit and bring it in. But I'm also going to curve it out a little bit like that. Or maybe curve it in. Not, no, I don't know. You can play around with what you think looks good. I'm going to kind of go with that and click check. But just so you know, I did actually go back in again and tweak the warping of my Polaroid mask layer as well because it wasn't curved enough the way that it was before. And then really the last thing we need to do to make it look a little bit more real is just add a drop shadow down here. So to do that, just hold control and click on the mask part of this second layer again, this one right here, and it'll make a selection around the Polaroid like that. Then we're going to go right here to this box with a plus to add a new layer, drag that layer below so it's right above the background, and then go up to Edit, Fill, and make sure Contents is set to Black and click OK. Now, you're not going to see it right away because it's right underneath the other Polaroid, so we're going to have to go Control D to deselect. And then, just while you're on that layer, you can see it over here, the, the shadow layer, we're going to go up to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Now, since it's behind the image, you can't see it very well, but you're kind of looking for this. You're kind of looking for not to have like where you can't see anything and you don't want it completely blown out like this. So it just kind of darkens the whole image. You want to try and move your slider so you have, you know, a little bit of a, a hazy edge around everything. That'll probably be good. Something like that for me. And I'm going to click OK. And then while you're still selected on the shadow layer, we're going to go Control T so we can resize and position our shadow where we want it. So the main thing you have to do is just make sure that this chain is not clicked like that. So unclick it and then we're going to move it down first. So I'm just going to drag it down and then I'm going to maybe shrink the top down just a bit because I don't want any of the shadow kind of sticking out up there, just down in the front right here. So once you've kind of repositioned and scaled it to where you want, then click check. And then just go over to opacity and adjust it to what makes sense for you. So I'm going to go kind of around 65 to 70, somewhere in there. And I think that looks pretty good. Now mine's off to the side. So I'm also just going to click on my top layer, 
hold shift, click on my shadow layer, and then I'm just going to move. Oh, see, I'm trying to move it there, but I forgot to relink this, uh, the, the mask here. So I'm going to undo that movement, click on the mask, then I can click and move everything together. So I'm just going to place it like that and then zoom out so I can see it a little bit better. And then if you want to do what I did in the thumbnail, like add some text in the background there that kind of fades into the background, just click on your background, go to your type tool right here. And I have this font called Bebus. I don't know if everybody has that one, but just pick like impact or something like that. That's a fat kind of chunky, straightforward font like one of these. And I'm just gonna click back here and type Grogu and then enter. And I picked that as 1200 font. Like it's, that's how big this file is. This next one, I'm gonna go to 600 and type baby Yoda and then space the child is what was in the background there. And then just, I'm gonna use my move tool to kind of place it where I want. Now I had it kind of fading into the background. So you can either double click on it to change the color. And I just picked the same color as I had down here to kind of fade it in like that. Maybe actually I had it maybe even kind of like that, a little bit darker like that. Click OK. And then I just adjusted my opacity. It wasn't anything fancy, just kind of dropped it down like that. So it's kind of fading into the background. And then just one last thing, as I look at the whole image together, I just don't like how close my shadow is to the Polaroid. So I'm just gonna move it a little bit more. So I'm gonna click on there and just hold my down arrow to kind of give it a little more separation like that. And then I'll probably drop the opacity, you know, a little bit more because the further away it is, the less harsh that shadow is gonna be. And there you go. That's how you make a very simple Polaroid pop up effect in Photoshop. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you next time.